So here I'm going to talk about, give an example of how one health perspective is important in achieving the new NTD roadmap goals. So yesterday we had the very inspirational launch of the NTD new roadmap, and it was great to see right from the start that some of the guest speakers raised the importance of both animals and the environment as well as humans and the importance of a One Health perspective to achieve these goals. And when we look at schistosomiasis, we can see that how this has now been fully embraced. When we look at additional risks that mitigate, that require mitigation, we can see that zoonotic reservoirs could continue transmission, is acknowledged. When we look at understanding, it shows the importance of zoonotic transmission in maintaining. And indeed, when we go down to strategic interventions, the potential need for the treatment of animals or keeping animals out of transmission sites has all been brought in. And why is this? If we look at lessons learned, if we look at China, that have put absolutely everything into schistosomiasis control. They have successfully achieved elimination as a public health problem but they haven't yet achieved interruption of transmission. And one reason for this proposed is that Schistosoma japonicum is acknowledged as a zoonotic organism. And we can't give any talk now in the era of COVID without mentioning the magic number R0. And we can see that R0 is consistently significantly below one in humans across China. So if this were a human, purely human disease, the control measures they've put in place is sufficient to interrupt transmission. However, we see that it's consistently higher in the cattle and lowland and considerably above in the hilly regions. And moreover, some of the work in our group has shown that rodents appear to be both maintaining transmission and increasing their role in transmission across parts of China, particularly the hilly region. But what happens if we think about Africa and Schistosoma mansoni and Schistosoma hematobium? Well, if we look at the analysis of the initial WHO goals for control, we can see that though many countries have successfully and quickly achieved that for Schistosoma mansoni, some countries, for a number of reasons, maintain transmission very highly. And we know that Schistosoma is Mansonite is zoonotic. It can be transmitted through wildlife, rodents in particular, and non-human primates. And this becomes critically important when we consider one of the countries aiming for verification of interruption of transmission in the Caribbean has recorded Schistosoma mansonite in a non-human primate. And this becomes even more important when we look and consider some more work, recent work within our group has shown that it's not simply that the wildlife is infected with Schistosoma mansoni. Molecular typing shows it's exactly the same genotype, the same strain circulating between the humans and the snails and the wildlife in these populations. So what about Schistosoma hematobium, urogenital schistosomiasis? Well, this is traditionally being classed as a uniquely human schistosome. And so you would think if mass drug administration is strong enough, we should be able to interrupt transmission. However, once again, those original sentinel sites, you see some countries, most notably in West Africa, such as Mali and Niger, maintain very high levels of infection over time. And if we then do the molecular typing of these schistosomes, eggs and urine assumed it was schistosoma hematobium, very large numbers, often up to 80% in children, were actually viable hybrids between the human schistosoma hematobium with the very closely related schistosomes of animals, here curasoni or bovis. Indeed, some humans were even infected with purely animal schistosomes, but as these viable hybrids. And again, if you bring in the genomics, you can see that this is shared transmission going on. And again, by using genetics, you can see that, that actually these schistosomes have migrated across the world. And of course, it's these hybrid schistosomes between schistosoma hematobium and schistosoma bovis that is now being maintained within Europe and Corsica in particular. So in terms of research to One Health policy, it shows that we do need to consider both humans 
and the livestock? Should we be treating both? And what will we do about the ultimate challenge globally of rodents and wildlife populations? At very least, we should consider now that we should stop thinking of schistosome in this very human-centric perspective. We should be thinking of it always in this broader One Health perspective where both humans and animals can be responsible in terms of maintaining transmission in Africa as well as Asia. So I just want to thank the huge number of people involved in these studies I've rapidly gone through in my five minute allocation, in particular, Dr. Elsa Leger, Dr. Stefano Catalano, and Dr. Emindo Diel, as well as our partners in each of the countries. Thank you very much.